Hey everybody, it's the Mad Master here. I'm doing a video today about how I got red-pilled, <laughs> so to speak, or in truth, into truth or culture or whatever you want to call it. Now, I have a lot of problems with uh, that whole concept that, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist or you're a this or that. Now, I also have a very healthy skepticism, in my opinion, of, of conspiracy culture. A lot of things are just chaotic or just a result of incompetency and, you know, other alter, other alternative alter motives rather than just, you know, the, the cliche money, power, domination, control, you know. That said, there's a, uh, there's a line where if you get into the other, if you go to the other extreme, you tend to ignore any real things, you know, like just for example, the weapons of mass destruction thing, possibly more than that with regards to uh, the, uh, I'll just put, you know, for, for YouTube censorship purposes, uh, the 7-Eleven job application as Pat McKinley calls it, 7-Eleven, you know, those uh, towers of New York, if you know what I mean. <laughs> because there was that 7-Eleven uh, as part-time job uh, joke going around a couple of years ago. Which that's a kind of in reference to, of course, you know. Blank Blank was a inside job, you know, that it was a joke on that. I posted it on Facebook, it was very popular. I got it from a YouTube comment years ago. So, anyways, I have been following this trajectory for many years. Now, I think, you know, with regards to the current crisis, anything I'm moderately uh, truth, truther about it, I, I think I am. I don't think I'm on the crazy extremes of, you know, anything like microchips or anything crazy like that. I don't believe in that kind of stuff. I do believe there's a confluence of factors influencing people. Look at the uh, cat dog cat recently, or no, the, F the FDA. They uh, had people resign over, I guess, something to, to do with the uh, the shot thing, you know, the the big shot. I'm using code words because uh, verboten subjects on YouTube. My amazing atheist uh, video got flagged for some reason. It, was, it wasn't removed, but it got uh, uh, adults only. I don't know if it was the picture I put. It's kind of funny. I still think, speaking of funny, I still think Amazing Atheist is funny. I just disagree with censorship and some of his takes the last year and a half, or last two years, basically. Because I stopped watching him, like, 2019, I'd say, to some extent. I don't know what, what was going on at that point. It just kind of got more blah. I think that's what was going on. He lost his edge. It's like Six Hex and Hammer said, I like both those guys. And I know, you know, Six Hex and Hammer is accused of being a uh, certain things and so forth. But... Do I buy that? I don't know. There's some problematic takes that he's had. I mean, I don't agree with a lot of what he says, you know, but I'm entertained by him and I think he's doing an important job with art, you know, all these uh, books that he's coming out with. So nevertheless, I'm not talking about that today. I'm just saying that one of my videos got uh, adults only, which is kind of the next step from removal, but you know, it is what it is. But anyways, this is how I got into the red pill, truth, culture, whatever you want to call it, conspiracy theory. Uh, so, growing up, you know, I had two, uh, I, I was in a household that was very Democrat-leaning. Um, I don't think it was, like, really that establishment, other than one of the people in that household that later became more establishment. Um, but, you know, they said, oh, Republicans bad, Republicans evil. I'm going to do another video about that today, probably, too, about the whole Republicans evil thing, uh, which really fits the current conflicts we're in because I feel like uh, I'm making up for some of my former beliefs and how I was when I was younger as far as how I viewed people that had different political beliefs than me. It was pretty pretty atrocious and uh, the very dehumanizing kind of beliefs that I used to have. So anyways, we had a family friend live in the house for a while and he uh, very well read um, he had, you know, we, the, the Gulf War one was going on the original Gulf War and 
I was like, oh, I was scared, you know, this, there was this, all this propaganda, like Nostradamus predicted Saddam Hussein, and all this crap came out at the time. But we were watching this stuff, and he's making these remarks and about the, the war and what they were saying, and then, you know, some of the stuff, he's like, this is not true, and then it came later, that's not true. And it was kind of like, you know, he's saying it's all for oil and for, you know, all this stuff, and hegemony, you know, in the Middle East and all this stuff, and it wasn't, you know, we funded Saddam. And it was like kind of my first exposure to the, uh, you know, that the truth, so to speak. You know, I, I was like a Democrat, but you know, I, I, you know, I saw, I used to watch headline news a lot as a kid too, and CNN's crossfire. I didn't understand a lot of it, but that was something I did. So then, I went to see the movie JFK in the theater. I'm old as fuck, so uh, that was a big revelation. And then I bought On the Trail of the Assassins by uh, Jim Garrison. I was really into the JFK thing. I was like, yeah. And, it, you know, that a lot of uh, Oliver Stone's film gets it wrong as far as some of the details and some of the stuff that happened. Um, and a lot of it, you know, a lot of it was kind of crap, you know. But it was it was a good movie. It was well made. It was a good movie. That, you know, that said, even with some of the obvious flaws to uh, the whole narrative that Oliver Stone pushed across got a lot of people into that whole idea these conspiracies you know these ideas that were happening you know as far as that goes so then what happened was and I already talked about this in my, my previous video I started to question everything you know that's when I got into like the uh, when I got into black metal and stuff and the Church of Satan a little bit you know some of the the Anton LaVey stuff at the same time I was exploring like communism and Noam Chomsky. <laughs> I bought all these Noam Chomsky books because my friend had one and I was like, oh, this is interesting. You know, and then I bought some and then I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I believe this and this and this now about America and all this stuff. So that was kind of a revelation. And I got out of communism, thankfully, pretty quickly. But, you know, and then I kind of almost swung to like the libertarian side for a long time, which that's kind of where I, closer to where I am now. But then what happened was uh, a big event. Actually, this, that was before the Libertarian thing. The big event was uh, the, the you-know-what in uh, 2001. And at first, because I'd read so, so much Chomsky or I don't know, I, I was familiar with Howard Zinn and all that stuff. And... I was like, America caused it. Oh my God, it's just blowback and, you know, we deserved it. I don't care, you know. And I was at a, I was working for this job where we made, we, uh, it was for uh, personal digital assistance and uh, there was all these calls coming in and it was pretty messed up. Like people lost their, their Palm Pilots in the, uh, in the towers and all this stuff, all this weird stuff. So I had that job and that's my thought though. I just remember that day, 9-11 when I, oops, I said it, 7-11, 7-11, remember? It's a part-time job to go to 7-11, right? Uh, I remember my job. <laughs> we closed down the center at the point, that point. Um, they sent us home. I went to, and it, it was a weird day because I was listening to Wasp's first album on the bus because this is when I wrote, didn't have a car. And... I had this weird feeling, I had this gut rot from the coffee that I drink. Sounds really weird, but like, I was like, listen to Wasps, the torture never stops. And I had this really sick, queasy, weird feeling about the day. And then I went to work. And then after work, I, I went to a comic book store and bought Spawn. <laughs> and I think, I, I don't know if I bought like a Scorpions tape. I was getting into the Scorpions at the time, like Louis John Roth and stuff. So I don't know, this is a weird story. This is just kind of off the map. But anyways, that 9-11, you know, oh, 7-11, uh, uh, oops, 7-11. <laughs> that part-time job I had at 7-11 happened, eh, eh, I keep messing up, so I'm going to try not to say more words um, like that. 7-11 happened, try to trick the algorithms, oh my god, so... 7-Eleven, you know, the part-time job happened. And I went to those two, you know, they went to those two locations, right? Three locations, sorry. If you don't count that field, four, but, or if you've counted that field. 
they went to those four locations, right? The uh, 7-Eleven workers. <laughs> 7 and from the beginning, from the start, I was like, uh, this is so weird. And it's bush and all this stuff. And I was like, just really strange. And I was at a job. I think it was the same job and I'm not completely certain. And I started to look up like just stuff about the, you know, the big, the 7-Eleven that was a part-time job. I'm using that code for the event that happened uh, 20, 20 years ago uh, this month, by the way, uh, in about 10 days. <laughs> Let's just, I'm just using code. Okay. I uh, looked up stuff about it and I found this thing called the uh, 7-Eleven as a part-time job time, timeline. I think I showed the book in a previous video. And it was just weird because all this stuff kind of, all these weird like foreign policy things and all these different like think tanks and stuff like that. project for a new American century and all that stuff. And I was like, man, this is weird stuff. So I be, you know, ostensibly just reading more and more about it. And a lot of that was, you know, bullshit. Like a lot of it was just like the, some of the theories people had were just completely bonkers. There was some, where there's smoke, there's fire though. And maybe a lot of people around there were pointing the fire on purpose at other things to make the smoke seem like it didn't exist. You know, misinformation or whatever, who knows. But later proven right, basically, with a lot of this, because it comes out, we have all these pages that were redacted from the commission report. And, you know, all this stuff happened. And at, at that point, I was like, yeah, this is, this is, I believe that the governments and corporations are not in our best interest, you know, not doing things in our best interest and often conspiring to do things against our will. More chaotic, more incompetent, of course, than the true conspiracy theorist, you know, diehard conspiracy theorist could say, but nevertheless, not just a coincidence theorist. Like, I believe everything the government tells me. CNN is great. Ooh. You know, so that's kind of how I got into that. Read a lot, read a lot of books. Uh, still actually have some books that I bought a couple years ago that I haven't read yet on that event. And then I started watching a certain uh, Austin, Texas conspiracy theorist uh, who uh, sells supplements. Um, now back then, the thing, and you know, because I was like on this Bush, anti-Bush, you know, campaign. I bought this bumper sticker, regime, regime change starts at home. And, you know, I got into like the anti-Bush thing and, you know, Democrat and Democrats were not on board at first because they, you know, they voted for some things like the Patriot Act and stuff. So, of course, over time, they started to get, when Iraq happened, they're like, well, that's a little too far for me now, uh, you know. But I had been questioning stuff from the beginning pretty much after I started doing a little research. So, I think it was a couple weeks later, maybe a couple months. Because they, you know, never forget that Donald Rumsfeld did this, uh, there was this Time article about this cave that uh, supposedly... Bin Laden was in like this almost like G.I. Joe slash Cobra from the G.I. Joe, you know, toy commercial toy commercial slash cartoon series from the 80s. Like it almost seemed like a play set, like it had all this tie tech stuff in this cave. And, and it turns out it's just a fucking cave with some like maybe a radio and like some blankets and like a sleeping bag or something that he was probably in, you know, it's just like it was such propaganda. So that was another thing that kind of cracked the veil open for me that, that article was just like, I never trusted the media after that because it's like, this is why I'm still questioning with our current crisis, all this stuff. Cause a lot of this government stuff is just, it, it seems, and the way that it's communicated in this current crisis is sim was similar. And I'm going to get to that in a second. So after that, I was pretty diehard red pilled, I guess. Now I'm going to go into some more stuff in the next video about some political beliefs I had back then, which I find very atrocious and toxic at this point. But at that point, yes, I was very uh, red pilled on the uh, events, you know, and I read a bunch of books. I read, you know, stuff that actually kind of goes through the whole timeline back to JFK and back to, you know, other stuff that happened in our history. And so I was pretty, I was a believer in that. And so, and slowly I started to turn sort of libertarian 
towards like 2010, 2011, which is kind of ironic because now I'm kind of going back to some of those beliefs. People don't understand. So any of my friends or family that don't really get where I'm coming from, this is kind of like, I think, or no, not not ones, the ones that are surprised. Oh, what happened to you, Matt? It's like, it's never really been that different. I mean, I think I was ostensibly more towards the Democratic Party stuff like three or four years ago. And then I kind of got shit on by the you know, Democratic Party again. And I'm never going back to that. So I'm not a Republican by any means, but some of the, even some of these like moderate Republicans in this modern era with this crisis are sounding more reasonable some of the time than a lot of people on the left right now. But that's a whole other story. I'm going to go into that in the next video, what I talked about, because they're exhibiting behavior that I see that I used to do in myself, and I, I hate that. So what happened next is, you know, I started to believe in some, you know, some stuff. I don't know, you know, some of these conspiracy theories about what they're planning to do the whole whatever the elites or whatever and i'm still questioning some i still question a lot of that i'm like i don't know if that's true i don't know if they could even accomplish that or they're just a bunch of rich people jerking off and you know at a around a table and saying all this stuff and it'll never happen you know who knows but that's kind of how i got into all that stuff now with regards to the current crisis the current crisis i'll just put call it that you know quote unquote the c and the v and the one and the nine. <laughs> it was from the beginning that I had questions. I had unanswered questions, you know, just like they called it during the 7-Eleven, uh, 7-Eleven job application, as Matt McKinley called it. I, I keep quoting him because I think he's hilarious, like, watch his videos a lot. Probably get cut down a lot of those videos, though, too. But um, at least for a few months, I got to clear my head of all this stuff. It's gotten pretty bad. Um, so I saw some of the early propaganda, propaganda or blog posts or, you know, articles, whatever you want to call it, you know, commentary. And I was like, hmm, this is kind of interesting because it reminds me of nine, you know, the 7-Eleven part-time job application. <laughs> I keep messing up. I'm trying not to say that. The, the words, but it reminded me of that. I'm like, this reminds me so much of that because there was a lot of the same, the same type of even sloganeering. And then the, the health, you know, the, back in the day, they said, oh, our, our great uh, healthcare workers and our firemen and our police, you know, it was like this like camaraderie, like love of, like they started to fetishize like firemen, like, oh, they're so hot because they're, 9-11, or shit, I keep messing that. Oh, the 7-Eleven is a part-time job thing, right? Like, it was sort of like the media was trying to play up on all that. And then there's, that happened with this last crisis too. But that's not even the, the, the thing I'm talking about. It's like these things called like new normal and nothing will be ever be the same again. Handshake, we'll never have handshakes in the future. Like these declarative extreme statements about the crisis that's happening that there's an underlying like like declarative action being taken in this situation reminded me so much of that previous event now 20 years ago in a couple you know a few days that i was like freaked out because i know that during the last thing or the last, you know, whatever, wherever your time, NLP timeline is, uh, you know, yeah, I'm into NLP and early linguistic programming. So, I mean, I'm trying to get more into that. That's what I'm talking about with like, where timeline is. And... So wherever that, you know, whatever that means, like as far as what they were trying to do back then, as far as the media working with Department of Defense or whatever, or Mockingbird, Operation Mockingbird, or whatever. If you don't even believe in that, that's that's fine. The, the establishment was saying all these things back then that so, totally reminded me of, you know, or totally this, the current stuff like a year and a half ago or plus now, reminded me of that old school stuff that they were saying back then about 
nothing will ever be the same again, a new, you know, new normal and all this stuff. And I was like, hmm, I'm wondering if this is like kind of, and I'm not saying manufactured like completely, but like, I wonder if this is being pushed as some type of agenda for something. And lo and behold, whether or not you believe that, a lot of other people thought the same thing. That's the start of that. And that was March of last year. So that just, my alarm bell, the alarm bells kept ringing when I, when I read those articles and stuff. I'm like, this just reminds me so much of that. Like these declarative statements that aren't backed up by any, like they're, they're backed up with the idea of permanency, which the previous event had as well. And these articles and these, you know, editorials and posts and stuff. That's what freaked me out because it's so similar in the language and the linguistics that if you're a truther about the previous thing, you see so many parallels with the writing and the editorializing that you're like, oh man, something's going on with this. It's beyond, you know, just a simple, you know, spike, spiked Lee protein virus in the air, right? Something's more, something more is going on that. So the truth, the truther in you is triggered by that, those statements in these articles. That's why I did my March 28th video on this channel about that. I was like, uh, okay. And I was more mad because I was thought it was stupid. Like I just thought, of course we'll go back to normal eventually, you know? I'm beginning to question even that but now, but you know, that, that idea, but you know, it's like, it's kind of funny that, um, that is what triggered me. And of course that got me into arguments with my, with certain people that I lived with, or, you know, it's like, you don't see the forest for the trees. I, I look at history and I look at, you know, um, the media and culture as having those ties with regards to parallel histories or parallel events or ideas that are being perpetuated. And it doesn't mean that necessarily like, oh, the powers that be were telling them to write these articles in this way that was illustrative of their their claim to power just like last time. And I don't, I'm not saying that, but it's just like this, this zeitgeist that people were living under that is similar in how like distorted it is that there has to be more under the surface that we're not being told about or know about just by the socio-political statement, you know, linguistics of this current event. So that's what I got to say about that. That's where we are today. I watched a lot of different videos. I've watched everything from the more mainstream stuff to the crazier stuff. I think there's, I still will hold true to this, especially considering a lot of the propaganda coming out. Now, that there is more to this than we're being told. There always was. And the reason behind it, the, the narrative, the, the reasons, who knows? I mean, it's just a simple matter of a competency of government and them trying to cover their ass. Who knows? It could be as simple as that. You know, as long as they're trying to do something, that's one of the reason for all these like governors and mayors saying, oh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. You know, you know rates don't go down or they go up or they, you know, they go up and down like doesn't really it's independent of all the stuff that they do pretty much at this point that's why calling people like DeSantis death Santis is stupid and just really partisan bullshit I'm not saying he's a good guy at all I'm just saying that it's dumb you know oh Greg Abbott he doesn't have a, a, a facial covering mandate oh my god that's gonna kill so many people and then you look at California's rates it's like you know or some other state it's just, you know it's 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 meaningless to politicize this at this point, especially now. And I'm seeing more people, uh, that's just, just another thought I probably should do a different video about. But yeah, that's kind of a story, a short story or a short tale of how I became more into the truth community. And I've read a lot of books by the, the famous authors of, uh, you know, including the, the turquoise man himself. And, you know, the guy, the guy that the, the Austin, the awesome guy was basing his whole career off that that got killed you know that guy 
talks about aliens too. You know, aliens, I got into that stuff too. I read some books about that. I'm a little more agnostic about aliens. I'm agnostic about patent waivers. Yeah. Anyways, that's about all.